Hey everyone, I just received some great news. I just found out that the Railroaders Memorial Museum in Altoona, Pennsylvania is officially open to the public now on weekends here in 2021. After doing a video there and only able to explore and check out the outside of the premises, I stated that once they reopened, I would head back there and see what the inside has to offer. And I got to thinking, since the museum is about railroading, what better way to get there than by using the railroad? So I actually booked myself a ticket. I'm here at the Harrisburg Amtrak Terminal, and we're going to board the Pennsylvanian and go to the Altoona Station. The great thing about it is that right across from the Altoona Station is the museum itself. So it's kind of right only a few footsteps away. So if you'd like to join me, grab yourself a ticket and come along with me. Coming up, Lewistown. This is Lewistown, ladies and gentlemen. Lewis
Well, we arrived. We're here at the Altoona station, and just as I explained, there is the Railroaders Memorial Museum. So the only unfortunate part is that we arrived here after 5 p.m., which is the scheduled time, and the museum closes at 5 p.m. So I am staying overnight here in Altoona, and they open up 10 o'clock in the morning. And for me, it's gonna be some downtime, but for you, it'll be just a few short moments. But tomorrow morning, I will see you over there somewhere so we can experience the inside full tour of the Railroaders Memorial Museum. back to the next day. I do want to apologize in advance. It is windy out, so I'll do what I can to try to buffer it, but it is uh, very different from yesterday. It's colder, it's windy, there's rain off and on, but we are here to do one thing, and that is to check out the inside and the rest of the Railroaders Memorial Museum and check out this view. The famous GG1, and that is the same one I took the picture of that's on my Spreadshirt available for purchase if you want to help support the channel. You can rock that t-shirt or hoodie Showing the GG1 Got some rail fans out here Great area to catch trains as they're watching a coal train currently go by And here we are now there is actually some historical significance tied to this building which I will put on the screen at some point in this video, but like always for videos like this, I'm not going to show you each and every little piece of information or details in there because obviously it's going to take away from coming to experience it for yourself. So this will be a highlights tour and I know a little bit of what to expect, but I'm coming to this for the very first time. Obviously pictures and websites don't always do it justice, so my you know, comments, opinions, reactions will be genuine and hopefully we'll have a good time checking out the Railroaders Memorial Museum was not open at all in 2020 due to the pandemic. It is now open weekends only, hoping to open up more as the year goes on. But gonna go inside, pay our admission, and have some fun. With the gate open now to go inside, you can actually get inside the kind of courtyard area here, which we saw from the outside last time. Looks like we can actually go inside the caboose and stuff, which is, looks like an old Pennsylvania caboose. And I know there's a roundhouse area and other various pieces of equipment, which hopefully we could get access to. And there's a train rolling by as we speak, intermodal. Right there is a little stage area that they made out of a type of flat car. Oh, we're inside. We've got our admission. Just show you the main area here. They have a live feed going up Horseshoe Curve. There's the GP9. So you guys have definitely seen that before on my channel. 
they got a museum store, which we'll check out a little bit later. And right in here, they got a really neat exhibit with uh, the front of a locomotive number 1361 PRR. It even has the light showing on it. It's like a big furnace or boiler. Got some workers here. All right, across from it too has a really great backdrop. It looks like you know old time 1800s how the town used to look and even a facade here like a little neighborhood with clothes hanging on the clothesline i really like that there's also an upstairs too there's many floors here and there's a sign here that says here in altoona an army of railroaders designed built maintained and moved the pennsylvania railroad the largest railroad in the world there's one of the big signals here the multiple lights let the trains know when it's okay to go or stop or slow down and there is the old signal signal tower right there with an employee waving a flag got the green flag to go included with your admission is a option to check out a feature in the theater here looks like it's first one is altoona era of steam which plays reoccurring okay so throughout the day it's a 27 minute video depending on how long this takes i may or may not check that out but the pink sticker that i have on my receipt here gives me access to the theater so old altoona sign here cherokee indian ward meaning highlands of great worth incorporated 1868 and there's a big timeline here with a really magnificent type of mural on the backdrop here. You got Babe Ruth, George Burns plays Altoona. And it just kind of teaches you about, you know, the history that took place, Nazi plans for Horseshoe Curve. Just how strategic Horseshoe Curve was to national defense in World War II became clear when it was found to be an intended target of Nazi saboteurs. Showing pictures of Mischler Theater and the Strand which are all located here in the downtown area. Cricket field and the world's largest swimming pool. Largest pool circa 1930s. Favorite place for Altoona workers and families to spend their day. The Ivy side pool was the largest concrete swimming pool in the world, even had an island in its center. Geography is destiny. We were the backbone of the railroad and they have a map here of the state. Obviously we are right there and they have a little interactive thing here. So let's try these buttons. Oh, so, okay, it shows, see those lights coming on. Many cities growing along the rails. Those are cities that are, that were developed due to the rails. A vital link, Pennsylvania steel mills. Let's see here. Okay, so all these yellow circles are all steel mills. Very large one there, obviously, Pittsburgh, the steel city. And I'm sure Bethlehem's on here. Bethlehem steel. America's Pennsylvania Coal and Oil Resources. Oh, look at that, yeah. It's all the coal deposits here. Also over in the eastern side too. Pennsylvania Railroad overcame the barriers of distance and geography in 18, 1854, had linked Philadelphia's ports and Pennsylvania's urban and industrial centers with the rest of the developing nation. So showing how everything became interconnected. Water and winch, early efforts to transport goods by water. There's the blue waterways. Susquehanna River, Juniata, Allegheny, Ohio. And the Allegheny Barrier. Ridge posed a 2,500 foot high roadblock. So that goes all the way to here so that's a massive barrier so one of the many things you can check out here in the little history room come to your local newsstand here with the paper boy sell magazines papers snacks see ya definitely 
Must be brick time. Also located here is a chocolate factory where they do make the Mallow Cups Boyer's, Boyer's Candy Factory, which is just down the road. And here is the old Hershey's labels. Five cents for one and a half ounce nourishing food chocolate bar. See, I always told you guys, chocolate's good for you. According to that, it's nourishing. Germania Building and Loan Association. It's a little help for my friends. Rural Road to set up home loan associations to finance the mortgages of fellow workers and residents. It's like they're just about to give a good old handshake on the deal. So stepping out, Altoona was a swinging town during the jazz and big band eras. Many Altoonas blew off steam by stepping out into the latest music and nightlife. Got a little jazz band and some swinging dancers and down here, kids are ready for bed. Here's one of the homes here that one of the railroad workers would have lived in. And as it was expected, it's quite cozy. Got the sewing table there. Even a train car. And what is that? India, Game of India. Grandma's basket of yarn. Parakeets. Family photos, train pictures. The old radios, tobacco pipes, and the kitchen where all the meals were made with love. Really takes you back to a simpler time. They even got the fly strip hanging. And looks like they made some gingerbread man cookies. I'm coming back for dinner. Looks good. Time off, railroad has worked hard and they bought, brought the same passion to the time off. Lives were filled with sports, social clubs, church, music, and family. So they played just as hard as they worked. There's so much history covered here, I didn't realize it was so extensive. So if you ever want to learn about Altoona and railroading history, this is by far one of the best places you could probably come visit. Looking at the old advertisements here, King Kong, Buster Keaton in the general, Al Jolson, the jazz singer, the devil is a woman, Robin Hood, Errol Flynn, Tom Mix, the Tony King cowboy. If any of you guys have ever seen any of these films, let me know in the comment section. And then we have Kelly's Bar. Oh. You know, a museum had a bar. Let's check it out. Got the cigarette machine. Who remembers those? Among friends with a drink and a few tall tales at the corner bar, railroad men could unwind after a day in the shops. It has even artifacts on the wall. So there's stuff to look for as you're in here. Wow, this is amazing. Bartender, I'll take a Bud Light, and if you have some peanuts, I'll take some of those too. Bud Light and peanuts, simple run. Hey guys, he's pretty. Just sitting here with some of my good friends, we're uh, just chit chatting about everyday life, having a drink. All right, guys, have a good one. Have a drink on me. This room was really neat. It really, you know, brings you back in time. I mean, that's a gorgeous looking bar. And this, they have, you know, what they have going on here with the... Oh, there, now he's talking to me. Well, here's another after work conversation for you. Hey, Jimmy, what are you doing here? There's Jimmy. Johnny is a homeless friend. He knows my dad from way back. All right, they asked me to leave. I have one too many. Nobody likes a sloppy drunk. What are, you, what are you looking at? I don't see. What are you looking at? 
What are you looking at? I think she's a peeping Tom looking at someone in that window. Not very nice. <laughs> Those country girls, city girls, you can always tell country girls from city girls when they were crossing the 12th Street Bridge. Country girls grab their skirts and the city girls grab their hats. Ah, there we go. Let's see. I knew she was looking in that window. What is she looking at? Anything good? All joking aside though, how they had this constructed in here like a little tiny, you know, village or town or neighborhood. It's very, very neat. I like the way it's done. Now I have a top view of the locomotive here that we saw on the first level. And there's the signal personnel. She's still waiting, giving the all clear. Even says the woman in the tower, a few jobs were open to both men and women at the Pensy in the 19th and early 20th centuries. One of them was operating the block tower. An unprecedented scale. In one word, huge. The world's largest railroad shops employed over 16,500 people here in Altoona. And they even have some smaller scale. There's an X29 boxcar. N5 cabin car caboose. P70 passenger car. M1A steam locomotive. And of course, GG1 electric locomotive. Nowadays they have what is called maintenance away. And they use equipment that rides on the rails to do the necessary repairs. But back in the day, it was all done with manual labor. And these are all the hand tools for tightening the nuts on the bolts, fastening down everything, hammering in the spikes, adjusting the gauge. A lot of hard work. Clear track ahead with this tenure at K4 stretches for 87 feet. Out on the road, the engine might be hauling 13 steel passenger cars at 90 miles per hour or more on level track. As we've seen at Steamtown, here's a look at inside of the locomotive cab. Engineer would be here, fireman over there, and together they work in tandem to control this massive steel beast. There's some really neat little artifacts. Here's a, a tin train, old transformer, freight train sounds, some educational books, train figures, stuff that, you know, people grew up with. They probably made them fall in love with trains themselves. I am certainly one of them. I have my share of trains and train videos and train memories like we're going to be walking through or yeah we're going to be walking under a train bridge so watch your head brings us into the ticket room ticket arrived the prr now this is why i came and what i heard about is inside there we're going to go in there in just a moment but they do have a model train display i know my friend dan who lives in the altoona area told me about it. he's like yeah you go there you're gonna love it so Here's some little dioramas. Looks like they're loading ice into the ice cars. There's a farmer in the field there. And a old blue pickup truck. These are pretty neat. Just shows you different, you know, times in life and what people were doing. Riding electric trains there. Waiting on the platform. Get their luggage loaded up. And even the construction of the bridges and tunnels. Now here's a very important job is for the operator. Operator switchboard. I've seen these actually in some of the abandoned resorts that I've filmed. And you really need to be on your game to patch everything through correctly. That is pretty neat though. They have all these artifacts in here. There's even um, like a lot of interactive stuff too, which you can always stop and check out another switchboard here, Weston. Good. Flip the switches. Yes, I'm like a little kid. Test labs, look at this. Do oranges need suntans? It's like they're testing light bulbs. It makes you feel like you're walking into Broadway. 
And there are some oranges and like a little laboratory here, a testing laboratory. Wow. There's even a picture of a real one there. All the different jars and instruments and tools. Again, I'm only briefly showing you all this because otherwise we'd be doing about a four hour video, but oh, here's something, let's see, electric shock. Well, that button's hot. Oh, so that's providing like an electrical charge. Testing broken or failed. Oh, okay, no, sorry. Looks like it's shooting air through it and there's a leak in the glove. This is the electric shock though. That is hot though, that button. Now, let's see. A clean sweep. Push the red button to see how the PRR tested brooms. Uh, I don't know. Were you expecting something else? <laughs> That's how you test a broom. Ulbrecht Sphere. A nickel was a nickel and a dollar was a big deal. PRR was the third largest consumer of lamps in the country. It tested all kinds of bulbs to figure out which were most efficient and economical. This giant pho photometer created and constructed in Altoona in 1926 was made to measure the intensity of light over time. Let's go inside a PRR office here. A report to the shareholders. Looks like some of an importance is back here or inside of here. There's more exhibits and historical oh, yeah, items shared here. Oh, talking to me? Alright, sorry. I know, that's why I'm here. It's a good photo opportunity, but also a chance to learn more about Altoona and the Pennsylvania Railroad. Alright, you guys ready to check this out in here? Let's see what it's like. Wow. You know, I'm going to switch to my phone, which does better. That's actually lights coming on. Never mind. Got a train running back there. It's like maybe a GP9. X-ray laboratory. See the train yard here. Some ash pits and uh, overhead gantry cranes. And it uh, looks like a pedestrian bridge there too, going across the whole thing. Some of the old locomotive shops. The way they built it too, into the corner here, and you know, the houses on the mountain there are just kind of ascending. It looks really neat. Just little tiny rooftops nestled in the mountains with trees. And then right below it is the massive freight yard here. A lot of details here with business logos and storefronts, people on the street sweeping, driving their cars, and here comes the train. And there goes the train. There's even some information on the Glass here about a wreckmaster is in charge at the site of a derailment or a train wreck. He directs what pieces are moved out of the way. Also helps determine if the cars and engines can be rebuilt or whether they are too damaged and should be cut on the spot. So I got some buttons here for the signal, which is stop, approach, and clear. Let's try it again. Here's stop. Approach and clear. See some of the signal lanterns there. Switchboard up there. There's a turntable. A lot of cool artifacts and details, even a little house construction right there. I know it's hard to see on this camera, but again, come in person. You'll definitely enjoy this without a doubt. Back outside, they have a sign here, Altoona Works, you're standing at the center of what was once the greatest railroad shop complex in the world, Altoona Works of the Pennsylvania Railroad. And some pictures and a diagram saying, we are right here. It just shows how massive the whole area was. 
But before it starts raining heavy, we're going to check out some of the outdoor exhibits here and then go inside and see the Harry Bennett Memorial Roundhouse. PRR Class N5 Cabin Car or Caboose number 477577. And I believe we could go inside, so let's check this one out. Oh, it's not even like remodeled or anything. This is kind of original. I like it. I smell like oil and grease. This is what they typically call it the crow's nest where you could sit to get a view to wash the whole train, make sure there's no issues with anything falling off, stuff like that. But this was kind of um, a little temporary shelter slash kitchen slash office for the railroad workers back in the day. They would do paperwork here, they'd have their meals, they'd take naps. And now, obviously, they did away with cabooses because things are more modernized, things are done electronically. The locomotives have bathrooms and everything is much more efficient. But this is what railroad workers would have to get very comfortable with. There is a, that might be possibly a toilet. <laughs> Got cabinets and shelving. So maybe there would have been something in there. Oh, there's a toilet. So not too bad. There is a, looks like a, for water. So they had pretty much everything they would need, including heat. They had a little, probably a coal stove right there. So it was a fully functioning caboose for more than one use. Those of you who do follow my channel, do you know what this is called? This is a railroad speeder and I had the pleasure of riding on two of them last year. I'll link that video down below. But these were used for bringing out crew members to either work on the tracks or for getting a train in a different area but they were primarily for transporting of crew members or employees but some of them for maintenance away but now they are pretty much collector's items for people like to run them on either sections of abandoned rails or railroad tracks with um under a certain group that gives you permission a lot of fun a lot of responsibility but like I said, a lot of fun. This is just to give you an idea how massive just the coal tender itself is compared to myself. And the locomotives are much larger than that. PRR Express Refrigerator Car number 2561. This was used to keep items cold. They're showing the barrels of milk so most likely they put blocks of ice in there and whatever necessary items were in there to stay cold would stay chilled and fresh until they got to their destination 470245 this is a flat car transformed into a platform here and it looks like this could hold up to a weight of 500,000 pounds if I am reading that correctly and this has a unique setup this is all steel and it kind of hinges it's got two sets of wheel trucks here on top of a like a platform and that's like a big hinge so this could go around you know fairly sharp radiuses and still be able to stay on track and it's identical on both ends so the big heavy load would be in the middle low center of gravity and both ends do hinge in order to make the curves and radiuses but this is not something you see operating nowadays this is for a specialized loads probably in different parts of the country but obviously it did operate here at one time but to see this going down the rails today would be pretty epic this is what i've been looking forward to is the roundhouse number 1220 it says we have to enter over here follow the arrows you can see some old looks like luggage luggage uh, carts here turned into planters now flower beds Got a train screeching by, going really slow, really loud. But before we go inside, there's some outdoor stuff here, including an old Conrail cab. 
I remember seeing this from the outside last time I was here, and this is an actual cab off a of GP40-2. It says 91388, number 3400. Unfortunately, it only looks cool from the outside and the inside there's not really much to see. It is just a hollowed out shell with a little platform in here, but it's good for photo opportunities. And there's yet another Norfolk Southern freight train. Wow, finally it stopped. That was so loud. So look at this. Do you guys spot anything? odd, unusual, or even dangerous? There's two things. Well, number one is the obvious listing of this trailer. Looks like the block underneath it collapsed under the weight, so now it's listing to the side. And also, it's carrying radioactive materials. So we don't want to open the doors on that. Right in front of it, though, we are seeing some wheels here. Uh, these ones look like probably off a wagon or carriage of sorts. Then we got actual train wheels that have, looks like they came up from under the ocean. They are so far, like, rusted and worn out. It's like encrusted with like, I don't know. There must be something important to these that they saved them. But it looks like they've been underwater for a long time. Even the flanges are worn out and just, they wouldn't be able to roll on the wheel on the rails today. But there is more to see out here including some equipment, including the GG1. We'll be able to get up close and personal to that. So this is well worth the price of admission, which was only $12. And don't forget too, during normal times, when uh, this is open, Horseshoe Curve is open, your admission here covers your admission at Horseshoe Curve. So you come here first thing of the day, and if Horseshoe Curve is open, go there, and you can be able to see both of them for one price. Berwind White Coal Mining Company Car Service Department. And this one's name is Nancy. Nancy is still holding on pretty good. Should probably never ride on the rails again, but she is here for your viewing pleasure. So if you follow the rails in front of Nancy, they lead right to the turntable. Looks like it's still in operating condition as well. And Depending on what's inside of there, it looks like they could still use this for moving equipment around, whether to put new stuff inside the roundhouse or outside here around the turntable, which is I'm pretty sure how most of this stuff got put here. But you do hear the rumble in the distance. Their train is still moving by. It's got some pushers. And here is the GG1 4913. This is probably most, their most prized piece here. There is one of these two at the Harrisburg Amtrak Station Terminal. They have one sitting underneath their loading platform, but this one is my very first one ever seeing in person when I was here last year. And it's such an incredible piece and would love to see it in operation. Obviously you can find videos on YouTube, but it's nothing compared to real life. It has the, I believe those are called pentagraph poles and they raise up to touch the overhead power lines to give it power. And there's two motors. So there's one in front, one in back, or vice versa, depending on which direction it's going. And two cabs, again, for the direction it's going. So it's a very unique locomotive. Got a Penn Central. Looks like a little coal car. It's very short and narrow. It's like half the, half the length of a normal one. And here's another incredible piece, Conrail Bay Window Caboose. These are not terribly common. And it is original, it's not freshly painted, so it is worn and weathered and rusty. You can even see they have wipers on the windows. I'd love to get inside of this one, but I don't believe it is open. But it is such a, a neat looking piece though. Oh, it is open. 
Wow. Okay, I'm not going in. It doesn't look very safe. But yeah, this is really, really neat. It has an old wood floor over there. Here, it's just exposed. I don't want to fall through. There's a ladder someone placed in there, but yeah, it's partially gutted, but still very much original. The difference with this one is that it has the bay windows and it doesn't have the crow's nest windows, so that is a big difference there. But yeah, very neat. I'm glad we got to see that. And it says pool car. Big box car here for Norfolk Southern, advertising the Railroaders Memorial Museum in Altoona. And Horseshoe Curve, bridging the gap for 150 years, 1854, 2004. And remember, whenever you're dealing with anything around rails or trains, safety first. P Express refrigerator car. This looks like a more modern rendition of that refrigerator car that we saw near the main building. And looks like a Possibly a baggage car, maybe a coach car. Let's see if we can peek through the window and see what this is. It reminds me of a combination of either a baggage car or um, maybe a mail car, possibly. There's filing cabinets on there. It looks like there would have been a big arm there or something. If you guys could tell me exactly what this is, feel free to fill me in. Usually when they have combination of doors and windows, it throws me off because it could be mail, baggage, um, could be coach, possibly, could be dining. But let's go inside the roundhouse and see all there is to see. Wow, this is big in here. Brings us right to a Pennsylvania Pullman car, 4819. Right here on the first rail. There's name plaques here. Oh, these are all employees. Electrician for Conrail. Well, it started PRR. Penn Central, Conrail, car repairman, welder. This is pretty neat. This is all employees and showing the dates when they worked and who they worked for. This one went for Pennsylvania Railroad, Penn Central, Conrail, and even Amtrak. That's pretty neat. Great way to kind of immortalize the history of the workers that were responsible for building, maintaining the equipment. Some of them even Went for Penn Central, Conrail to Norfolk Southern. Conductor, trackman, foreman, boiler maker, blacksmith helper. You could spend a lot of time just reading those, but they're all along the walls here, ever growing. Welcome to the Harry Bennett Memorial Museum. They do have more information plaques along the whole outskirt and around. So a lot of, a lot of material to take in if you have the time. Here's the Pennsylvania K4. It's actually one of these I'm going to be getting for my train layout in O scale. It's a pretty famous and incredible locomotive. More pictures of the K4 in 1361. Very common locomotive for the PRR. And a lot of information about them. And now, unfortunately, I guess I was under the assumption that there was a lot more to see in here. You can see the scale of this roundhouse, but it's <laughs> closed off. We can't go past here. The other person that's in here said that in the past, it used to be open, but I guess they're doing some type of work or something. So it is closed off for the rest of it, which is disappointing. We do see something there. It looks like a boiler and firebox there, uh, just sitting there on braces. And there's a tender in the back so it looks like something may be getting restored in the very far back behind it i can see some red wheels and a green paint job it looks like an old fire truck and then right here we do have a little switcher 
Uh, not sure if that's an SW1 or not, but that is, looks like an operational diesel, diesel switcher, probably using to move equipment out there on the turntable or the static pieces, but that looks like an operational piece. But unfortunate that we can't see more. I thought there was actually gonna be a lot more equipment in here, but at least we're able to get inside and check it out and get some information on some of the K4s and stuff like that. But probably the highlight for me is all these name plaques with the railroad workers dating back from so long ago. Some of them are uh, 1906, where it says 49 years of service. People have dedicated their lives for the railroad. Taking a closer look over here too, not all of the doors here have rails. Now, with a traditional roundhouse, every bay, every door would have rails coming out, but this one does not. So there's no way to get any pieces in or out over here by rail. But as we do come farther up, we will see where the rails do begin and the turntable would line up to them. So from here going forth, they could bring equipment in and out, but nothing behind me. So I guess it's just more for the look rather than functionality. So I just got out of the gift shop and made a few purchases and they actually gave me an included tote bag. So I'll quickly show you what I bought and then share my thoughts about the museum itself. So the first thing I got was a little button that says, I climbed the stairs at Horseshoe Curve. I believe it's 194 stairs and with the funicular railway being closed due to the, pa due to the pandemic, you're forced to climb the stairs. So I thought that was a funny little memento to get for that. I also got myself a horseshoe curve pen and a little stylus for uh, smartphones and tablets. I also picked up a Conrail magazine, winter 2021 edition. Has a lot of information in there about Conrail locomotives. First clothing item is a Pennsylvania Railroad. It's a good, nice green long sleeve shirt. I got a black Penn Central t-shirt. And probably my favorite item is a nice Conrail hoodie. So this is a nice blue color, Conrail quality. And I have t-shirts of it, my first hoodie though. So that was my purchases inside the gift shop. So I'm gonna tell you my thoughts about the museum. Uh, if it is echoey, I'm sorry about that. I'm standing inside the little vestibule here of the overhead pedestrian crossway because it's starting to rain outside. But the museum itself is phenomenal. I spent upwards of two hours in there. I know this is a longer video, but I try to show you as much as I can, but also leave you wanting more to come here in person and see it. But being able to have access to the grounds, the there is actually four floors. The fourth floor is a library, but that was closed today. The basement does have bathrooms, a coat check, and a little kids play area. But the main three floors is where you are going to see everything. And from the fake, you know, building facades to the mannequins, interactive stuff, the train layout, and just the amount of history that's tied into this is just mind-blowing. I mean, there's history tied to the Pennsylvania Railroad, there's history tied to Altoona, the people that were working for the companies, it's just... You know, really in depth, you could spend days here and probably not see all of it. But for $12, as I mentioned, that gives you admission to Horseshoe Curve when it is open as well, which I believe starts beginning of April. But out here in the turntable area, roundhouse area, you get to walk up and close and personal to the equipment, the GG1. And, you know, it's just more than I expected. The only thing I was disappointed with was the roundhouse. There's only that one little area you could go to. I was hoping there would be full of equipment in there, but it's not the case. 
but nonetheless that is just how it is but the rest of the building though and the grounds are well worth the money to come here and the gift shop has a lot of great items from clothing to toys to books dvds anything you want to get to kind of take home a little piece of history with you you could definitely find it here so hope you guys did appreciate the effort for me to return here it was a lot of fun traveling by amtrak to come here specifically for the museum and now i have plans to travel onward so that's going to conclude this video questions comments thoughts feel free to share them down below and if you want to see any more uh, train related videos check out my let's catch a train playlist down below in the description until then guys i'll see you in the next video